So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to go ahead and graph a system of inequalities, the main important thing that I want you guys to uh, know is when graphing inequalities, it's just like graphing equations. Okay. So basically, my advice for you guys, my process would be, the first thing is to make sure you have them written in slope-intercept form. And if you guys remember slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So basically, for each equation, we want to go ahead and solve for y. That means we need to isolate the y. That means we need to undo everything that's happening to the y. So in this case, to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides. I now obtain negative y is greater than negative 3x plus 12. Then, to solve for positive y, I will divide by negative 1 on both sides. Since I'm, multiplying, since I'm dividing by a negative number, I now have to flip the sign. So my final equation is y is greater than a positive 3x minus 12. Right? Make sure that negative 1, you divide that into both the terms. Huh? Dang, I didn't even flip the sign either. Yeah, you can multiply by negative 1, too. I always do that. I always say it. I even use a different thing, but I always forget it. So that's, you guys can see, I can make the mistakes too. You will make the mistakes. You've got to be very diligent. Make sure you um, be very careful with that. Over here, I just have to add the x. So therefore, I'm left with a 8y is greater than x minus 4. And then I'll divide by 8. And I obtain y is greater than 1 8 x minus 1 half. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there's a little 1 that's right there. I don't have another color. Remember, there's a 1 that's in front of that x. So it's really 1 divided by 8 times x, which is the same thing. And negative 4 over 8 is negative 1 half. Okay? So now that I have them in slope-intercept form, the next thing I want to do is identify the slope and the y-intercept. So over here, remember slope, even though that's an equation, the inequality is the same thing as equation. It just tells you um, as far as how to help you with shading and determine if the line is solid or dashed. So my slope is my coefficient of my variable. But remember, we always want to write our slope as a fraction. So if you don't have your slope as a fraction, put it over 1. So I'll write my slope is positive 3 over 1. And my y-intercept, I always like to write as a coordinate point. Why do I like to write my y-intercept as a coordinate point? Because it is a point. And what it does is it reminds me I need to plot that point. So when I'm going to graph, I just go to 0, negative 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I make a nice big dot. That's my y-intercept. Then I follow the slope up 3 up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And since this is y is less than, that's going to be a dashed line. So it looks like that. Now, you guys could use test points, right? And to do determine shading, you can use the test point. And the best test point to pick always is 0, 0, as long as the line does not go through 0, 0, right? Well, this line does not go through 0, 0. So you could easily test your solution. However, we're in Algebra 2 now. So hopefully you guys understand, as long as you have your equation solved for y, where y is on the left-hand side, since it's less than, that's going to tell me to shade below. So you're going to want to make sure you include your shading on all of your um, systems, or your inequalities, because these are inequalities, not equations. Then the next one here, now my y-intercept is y is greater than 1 8. So negative 1 half is going to be my y-intercept, which is right here. And then my um, slope is going to tell me to go up 1, which would be right there, and then over 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again, that's greater than, so it's a dashed line. And greater than would tell you to shade above, as long as y is solved and it's isolated. Okay. So therefore, you're going to graph each of them separately. And what you guys will notice is there is a region where the two inequalities intersect. And that region is what we call the feasible region. Okay, But you're going to graph. You're going to make sure you shade for both of them. Anybody have any questions on that?